Main event, Kenny Omega defending the AEW World Heavyweight Championship against Hangman Page. Can I bury this one while you're at it? No. Wow. Okay. Of course not. Because this match was awesome. This match ruled. So it was a great entrance of Hangman riding his horse through this through the empty streets of Minneapolis. I'm not quite sure how they pulled that off. But uh, on the billboards and the street signs and everything, they're showing video clips of all of his failures that he must overcome if he's going to triumph here and win this championship tonight. Didn't you notice the big blockade and down one of the streets and the cars with their lights on waiting for the blockade uh, to get, move? Clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> clearly I did not. There's some pissed off travelers that day. That's I'm, all I I'm know. sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. So this match was awesome. This match was just excellent. Um, more apron moves, of course. And it's, 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 it's one of those matches that there was not like, there's not a, uh, a Hulk Hogan match where there's the big comeback at the end. They're they are going back and forth for like all 30 minutes or whatever this went. Uh, 20 plus for sure. And uh, it's all great. And it really picked up at the end when they, it, you know, it's the, 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 they're both, well, Omega for sure is a Japanese veteran. So uh, a lot of the, save everything for the end, which is what you should do anyway. But uh, Page is left with the, the, the flipping German suplex, and Omega jumps up from there, hits a J-Driller. There's an, an avalanche moonsault body slam, which is absolutely horrifying. Thank God no one died there. Um, the buckshot is teased, but Omega just collapses. And so Page goes for the V-Trigger, uh, goes for a V-Trigger instead, but uh, anyway, everyone gets bumped. When there's a million things happening, and there's, uh, I, wrote, I, wrote, I wrote into his stuff. Uh, the ref gets bumped. Don Callis had been interfering nonstop in this match throughout. There's constant interference, and he finally gets his beating after the referee is laid out and spent the mat rest of the match lying on the apron just being in the way. Uh, Page is the dead eye. There is no referee, so Aubrey Evans gets the little Nate spot, which gets a sprint down the ramp to count the 2.9. And <laughs> there, there's a... Uh, Omega is hitting the Kawada kicks, which Page does not like. So he fires up and his lariat's Omega to death. The young bucks come out. They are beaten to hell. They are limping. They're supporting each other. And they look uh, conflicted about what to do here. There are backdrop drivers exchanged. Both guys drop each other right in their head. Terrifying. Please don't do that, everyone. Uh, Paige goes to the buckshot, but in mid-flip, he is hit with a V-trigger, which seems like death. And Omega goes to the one-winged angel, and the place is convinced this is it. But no, Paige escapes, hits a one-winged angel of his own, and though it only gets two, it's really the beginning of the end for Kenny Omega. And Paige goes to the apron, and one of the bucks is at his feet. And they make eye contact, but the buck just looks at him and nods, and Paige does the buckshot lariat to the back of the head. He goes to the other side of the ring. There is Buck B. Same thing happens. They just nod at each other. And Hangman hits the buckshot and wins. He's new AEW, AEW, new AEW champion. This finish was a really, really good idea. I was not a fan of the way they shot it because it took the focus off of Paige and put it on the Bucks. Literally, they almost missed the second buckshot because they were watching one of the Bucks nod knowingly. Uh, it would have been better to have, have the Bucks come out, you get on the apron. Everyone thinks they're going to interfere, but instead they nod at Paige and step down to the floor, and then they're done. And then you just focus on what Hangman's doing. But Hangman wins. He is the AEW champion. The crowd's very, very happy about this. And the Dark Order finally comes out, and now Paige is, considers himself worthy to be their friend. They all embrace, and they're carrying him off the show, uh, carrying him off the uh, around the ring as the show ends. A champion's allowed to have friends. What a novel concept. Great finish. Time. Friends he's had for forever. To, yes, yes. He was he was visited by by friends he'd lost. He celebrated with friends he'd made. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but I wrote an article for Sports Illustrated. It's on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. I told the story, whole story of Hangman, and uh, honestly, the story, if you didn't read it, it does go back like prior to the the beginning of the promotion. I mean, the story it predates AEW, at least in the sense that on the very first show where Hangman was challenging Jericho and they were going to do the decision match for the title, he wanted the Bucks to come to the ring with him because the Bucks always went to the ring whenever Kenny Omega had a major championship match. And he wanted them to come down for his match, and they didn't do it. 
And so literally that was that was the beginning in AEW of a two plus year storyline yeah. that ended with his championship match. His former buddies came down to the ring and they were there in his corner when he won the title. And do I think that they're immediately going to put them back together again? No, I do not. I don't know where they're going to go. But, I mean, it's very clear that this is not the end. This is maybe the midpoint. Like, the end of this is the elite all getting back together again. And that's probably another two years down the road. And I don't know exactly how they're going to get there, but I thought the match was fantastic. They told a great story. They told a great self-contained story. Like, if you showed this to somebody that knew nothing about the story, it would still be an awesome match. But if you know the story... It's an even better match because of the things that they did in the story and, and leading into the story and after the story. So I thought this was a, a fantastic main event. I was flabbergasted going in. There were people that thought that Hangman was going to lose this match. It's like, how? In what universe would Hangman lose this match? It, this, was, this was the time for him to win. It was the guy for him to beat. It all was, was perfect. And you know how hard it is to book a one-month storyline? Uh, not to mention a two-year storyline with a global pandemic in the middle. This was just fantastic. You know, when the Bucks were walking down, I was questioning how are they going to get out of this. And they almost got me when the Bucks split up and went to one side of the ring. And Nick was the first one there by the hangman. I said, okay, well, uh, Nick's not going to interfere, but Matt will. But um, both of them didn't touch him, and uh, it was a great finish. It was a great match, and uh, the celebration afterwards was probably the best thing of all. But uh, awesome main event and uh, a really, really good show. What did you think of this, Mikey? I thought Kenny Omega, especially knowing how uh, how hurt he is, did an incredible, incredible job. And um, I, I agree with... Uh, Vinny with the kind of the the choice and direction um thank you Mike. for the finish was a little you know suspect but um, I knew I liked you but the finish itself was awesome the nodding and the buckshot and the yeah the, the choice to go to those camera angles at that at that point I mean I I wrote it all down in the Sports Illustrated article and it did come off really good in writing Yes. So, I mean, it's like he went to one side and the guy was going to do something. He didn't and he did it. And then he went to the other side and the guy didn't do anything and he nodded and he hit it. It sounds great on paper. I thought it was fine in execution. I mean, it might have slowed things down a little bit and taken a little focus off the hangman, but I thought it was I thought it was good. I mean, live sports is just so incredibly hard to shoot and especially direct. Well, it's it's, a, it's nearly impossible to get that I'm sorry I love you moment and then get the sweet chin music right after you know it, it's just uh, really hard to do so I understand that. Well, live sports but, are hard uh, to shoot in part because you don't actually know what's going to happen, but and and and, is, I, and wrestling is a sport, but they didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> well, they did know what was going to happen, but you know, Mikey knows his shit, Vinny. You're just some geek behind a microphone. I agree. Yes. <laughs> But people pay for me to talk, so that's what I'm doing. That's true, I think. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem, Max, smart enough to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.